Hello there, my name is Manny. Today I will show you how I added a missing external antenna connector to an import version of the Panasonic RFP45 AM, FM, long wave, and short wave receiver. So I bought this RFP45 from an online seller on Facebook for 1000 pesos or roughly equivalent to 18 US dollars. Well, this 1991 vintage still has a high value, regardless of age. I've seen this kind of receiver being sold used at eBay for 100 and up to 250 US dollars. I have its older and costlier sibling, the Panasonic RFB60, and I liked the performance when I came upon the ads on Facebook selling this RFB45. I immediately called the seller and made the necessary arrangement to buy it. Well, performance is not on par with the RFB60, but the RFB45 has BFO and can decode single sideband and CW, which is great for ham radio listeners like me. There are several versions of this radio, and my copy does not have the external antenna input option. From what I read online, mine was the uh, German or uh, European uh, import version that has omitted the antenna jack and along with some capacitors and coils that makes up the front end filter networks. But uh, the main board was all the same and it did have the provision for the antenna jack. And that is the subject of our today's fix, adding the missing external antenna jack. The connector we need is a 3.5mm stereophone jack that is commonly used to connect a headphone in your MP3 players. It is the same size as a headphone jack on this RFB45 except for the headphone jack in this radio is in mono only. As you can see, the antenna port has not been drilled because it is intentionally omitted in this version of the RFB45. So I'll just drill a hole and cut some plastics to install and fit our missing connector jack. I can't find the exact type of jack used in this radio, so I'll just modify a replacement part taken from an old cassette boombox. Looks like this replacement jack has extra pins, so I'll just remove the second half, which was fastened in place by a clip. Perfect fit. Now we are ready to solder the antenna jack to the board. But before we do that, let's have a continuity check on the proper terminals that goes to the antenna plug.
Hot RF terminal is okay. Ground terminal is okay. Let us solder the RF wire to the hot pin of the antenna jack connector. Now the ground wire leading to the antenna jack. A coil or an inductor marked as L2 has been omitted by the manufacturer in this portion. But looking at the circuit, it seemed that it leads to antenna ground, so I'll just jump it up with a thin wire to the common ground strip of the circuit board. Okay, so now we have assembled the radio and uh, with our new external antenna jack in place. All the parts seemed okay, I think.
Now let's put some batteries and test our external antenna connector modification. FM is OK. Now switching to AM medium wave. Well, long wave and uh, the AM band is now suffering from heavy noise interference from my computer, LCD monitor, and the uh, phone chargers. Let's try short wave. And uh, let's try if it could receive anything by its built in whip antenna. Now let's connect the external antenna to the connector jack that we installed. Antenna disconnected. Let's tap the tip of the antenna plug to the built-in whip antenna. Barely audible signal buried in noise. This test proves that it is not enough to clip a wire to the built-in antenna if the radio is suffering from too much noise and interference. You need to ground the radio to reduce the noise from reaching the receiver's front end. Even the expensive radios with the best noise filtering need to be grounded. That is to connect a ground wire to the common ground foil path in the circuit board. Okay, so I'm tuned in right now to 7.395 megahertz, the frequency of uh, the Kada group from the Philippines. And I will try to, uh, right now it's connected to the external antenna with the uh, modification that we made, that I made earlier. Okay, so it's an antenna connector modification because this Panasonic uh, RFP45 model doesn't have one. 
doesn't have an external antenna connector so I uh, just uh, fitted one and uh, okay so I will try to compare uh, just clipping or touching the uh, antenna external antenna with the uh, telescopic whip versus the uh, connected one by the external connector or external antenna jack I'm touching the uh, antenna now on the uh, telescopic group. It's just like clipping a wire into the uh, telescopic antenna. Without it, you can uh, hear the static, clear static, and then we reconnect the uh, the axle. Actually, this is this one is the uh, antenna terminal block that I've shown earlier. When I connect it. Uh, it back to uh, the uh, external antenna jack that we made. The sound or the audio is very clear with no sign of static. Let's remove it again. I think this is coming from Linus from my charger on the LCD monitor. When I touch the uh, connector again, okay, I will be touching the uh, tip of this uh, the actual connector to the uh, telescopic tip. It's full of static on the uh, audio, it's barely audible. Then we connect the, let's reconnect the antenna again via the uh, external antenna track that I made. So as you can see, um, this radio cannot be clipped with just an external antenna wire. It needs to be grounded as well. So with our antenna connector jack modification, we are able to connect the positive wire of the uh, antenna and uh, provide the ground as well. So I hope you like the video and uh, let's hear more of the conversation. So there you have it guys, another successful modification. This time with a vintage Panasonic RF B45 shortwave receiver from 1991. We restored a missing external antenna jack that has been left out in the factory with this particular import version of the radio. If you like this video, please thumbs up and subscribe my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.